Hi, how is everybody doing this week? I hope that you have had a good week so far. I know that things are starting to look up in our industry and just as a whole in our country as everybody is hopefully starting to come back online and just get back to normal again. Doesn't look exactly like it did pre-COVID, but it definitely is starting to feel a little bit more normal, I think, for a lot of you out there. And I'm just so excited at what we have going forward. And, you know, maybe hopefully some things have changed in your life as you have went through these last six to eight weeks. And as we are moving into the future, moving into the summer, I think that's always a just just an, an enlightenment for a lot of us just to be out of out of the, the winter and seeing everything in the spring here coming up and growing and just you know, it's, it's to me it's it's just really uh, so encouraging and and one of the things that I thought about when I said you know I, I really want to do a little mini series that is a little less heavy business wise and just a little bit more for us is, you know, I really thought about, you know, being true to ourselves. And, you know, maybe during this COVID time, you had an opportunity to really maybe look at some things that you've never done before, or you had enough time in the pause to sit and think, what do I really want to do with myself? And I've, you know, I've, I've been talking to a lot of clients and a lot of friends, and I really think that the pause has allowed us to maybe dream a little bit as scary as this has all been it's also allowed us to dream and to think about maybe what are some changes that i want to do that i never had an opportunity to do before when my life was just so rush rush busy busy and so what i'm hoping as we go through this little mini series four ways to be true to you is that hopefully you'll be able to hold on to that dream maybe that you were inspired to start thinking about or had time to start thinking about. And I hope that this little series is going to help you kind of move your way towards that goal. So in our first series, we talked a lot about claiming our mindset. Do we have an open mindset or a closed mindset? Are we, are we, able to see ourselves moving forward towards a goal that maybe we, we haven't been able to see before? And what are we doing mentally to get ourselves prepared for that? Today, we're going to be talking about bravery muscles and um, just kind of what I think is like the fear of failure. And I think for so many people, whether it was you when you first made the decision to go into practice for yourself or when you made the decision to run a marathon or you made the decision to do whatever it is, or you're in that process right now of making a decision, I think the biggest thing that we all encounter, and, and I promise you there isn't somebody out there who hasn't had some fears involved in moving themselves out of a comfort zone and into a realm of unknown. And I will tell you, you know, myself included, I, you know, as, as I look back at my career and I think, uh, just how did I get to this point? How did I get to the point of being a national orthodontic consultant? When I started 28 years ago in my industry, I was a Jill nobody, and I'm still kind of a Jill nobody, but, but really, you know, w when you think about it and you think I was this young girl with a dream to become a consultant on a national level. And yet I knew nobody nationally. I, I had no industry connections that took me from where I was to where I was now. But what I had was a dream. And what I had was just a passion to move forward no matter what fear factors were there. And so what I want to encourage you, no matter what your dream is, is to pick a dream and to move forward with it and to not be worried about fear. And, you know, it's kind of interesting as we have been going through this COVID, one of the best things that, that happened for me was my husband and I happened to get our gym, our home gym set up before all this happened. And I have been able to be a part of the Peloton app uh, where I can be working out in 
in groups. And one of the just I just absolutely love how encouraging the coaches have been. And as I was doing a workout yesterday and I was running along on my tread and I'll tell you, I had a big fear of um, getting involved in running and getting involved in cycling. I've got some knee issues and what, what if, what if, what if. And, you know, I finally just said, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to one foot in front of the other. And I'm going to start in my walking class and I'm going to move up to a jogging class and I will eventually be running. And, you know, I was listening to the coach yesterday and, you know, just positive reinforcement in your ear for a half hour. You can't go anywhere but listen. Right. And one of the just beautiful things that that they said, and they're always, you know, got something encouraging is failure is not futile. And I thought, huh, that's kind of interesting. But what but what that kind of ties into what we're talking about here is even if we choose something and we fail, it's going to be OK because we are going to have learned something from that failure. And if we can take that take it, internalize it, think on it, chew on it, and then start again, it's never futile. It's never going to be something for nothing. And so what I want to think about when you're thinking about your your dreams and, and you know, maybe picking your, your one um, thing that you're going to move forward with, I really want you to think about, I call this the no bullshit rule. And what I really think is important is when we are looking at doing something that is so out of our comfort zone, I, I just the, just taking the opportunity to think, okay, all bullshit aside, all of my fears aside, what's really, really, truly the worst that's going to happen to me if I go after my dream. So I'll I'll, I'll take this back personally. When I decided to become a consultant and started working in this realm, there was this point where I and my husband and I talked about it. And I said, what's the worst that's going to happen? I'm going to have pursued a dream that I've had for many, many years. And I'm going to fail. And I'm going to be out some money. And my pride is going to be hurt and it's going to be really emotional, but what's the worst? Am I going to die? No. Am I going to be bankrupt? Probably not. Um, And do I still have a skill set that I can go back to something else? Yes. And I think I'm still employable. So, you know, when, when I started really stripping away all of the things that got in my way of saying, Jill, go after your dream, it's really that like pulling away all the bullshit that gets all wrapped up in our head and saying, I can do this. I can move forward. And what's really going to happen? Because I think if we identify our fear and we identify the things that are getting in the way and we think about it, it isn't so scary if it happens, right? So I really want you thinking about that. Whether, like I said, maybe it's running a marathon and you're thinking, well, gosh, I've never even ran a mile. How am I going to run 26, right? It doesn't matter. It's just what's the worst that happens? You get halfway through, you can at least say you got 13 miles in, or you get five miles in, and you can at least say, well, I at least made it to the starting line. I at least made it five miles. And I think that's the thing is, it's just getting rid of all that negative talk that we do to ourselves as humans and 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 really filling ourselves up and just looking at that. So I want you to think about that. The other thing is, I just want you to spend a little bit of time getting uncomfortable. You know, so what is the worst, like I was saying, what's the worst that happens if I fail? I mean, like really, truly, pride is a big deal, but it's just my pride. It's nobody else's pride that cares. You know, if if I fail, what will I lose? Uh, More than likely, probably not your house, probably not your car, probably not all of these other things, because if you're taking the steps to move forward, you're probably safeguarding yourself a little bit. Um, And, you know, the biggest thing is, what does it really matter what people think? At least I made a move towards something that made me happy. I made a move towards a goal. I made a goal um, and, and I moved forward. If I fail, I fail. At least I can say I did it 
and um, nobody can take that away from me. So I want you to think about getting uncomfortable, stripping away all of that negative energy that keeps you from doing what you want to do. And I want you to really think about what are what are the real dangers involved in following your dream or going after a new goal? Uh, maybe you say, you know, Jill, uh, I just really want to really step up my game on social media, but I'm afraid of what people will think. And what I really want you to just dive into is, is this a real fear or just a perceived fear? Because I, I really believe that there are a lot of good people out there and they just want to encourage each other. Yes, we've got our negative Nancys out there, but when it really comes down to it, I think people would rather encourage people and see them going for their dreams and going to do um, what makes them happy than to hear them just talk, 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 talking about something they never were able to move forward in. So really, you know, take some time to think about, am I not doing what I want to do because I'm afraid? Is it a real fear or is it just a perceived fear? And I just need to work through that a little bit. The other thing is spend some time before you jump in sitting in the hot seat, feeling what it's like to maybe fail. So, you know, let, let a, a, a trusted colleague give you some real true hard advice. Invite the criticism because once you've sat under that pressure, you realize it's not that bad. I can manage this. Maybe ask for advice. Maybe reach out to uh, trusted friends and to people who are um, out there that that could give you advice. It may not be always the advice you want, and you have to be smart about listening to that advice, but at least you're kind of taking yourself out of your own bubble and hearing what other people have to say. Getting feedback, whether it's what you want to hear or not, sometimes it just helps us open up our mind and go, oh, that's a good point that somebody is seeing and something I want to do. Maybe I agree with them, maybe I don't. I mean, when I said I wanted to become a consultant and I wanted to work with startups, I will tell you what, I didn't get any positive feedback from anybody because it just didn't make sense. The money's not there. Why would you want to do that? Blah, blah, blah. But that was my passion. And I took all their information. I heard what people had to say, but I also had to decipher what made sense for me. And the last bit of advice that I would give you is I have learned this over the years. The best thing that you can do in any goal that you're going to set is to level up. And what level up means is to push yourself to go and, and get mentorship from somebody who is farther along. So if you want to run a marathon, find somebody who's actually run a marathon to help give you advice on how they did it. Or maybe you want to learn to um, start painting and, you know, you just love the idea of painting, but it scares you to death. Well, take some classes, level up, find somebody who's been there and help and, and can help you get there. Maybe it's your business. Maybe you're out there thinking, I really, I know it doesn't make any sense at all, but I want to be a startup orthodontic uh, office and I, I really want to run my own business. Well level up, find somebody out there that can mentor you, can give you good advice. And let me tell you, you don't want people that just yes you. You want people that are going to give you real advice and really help you, you understand what maybe they went through to get to where you want to go to. So as we kind of finish up on this li little bit here, and when we're talking about four ways to be true to you, number one, I want you to just think about starting just start. Choose something for this year, what's left of it, and just start. And for today's takeaway, I want you to just own your fears. Get rid of the bullshit. Think about what gets in your way and start moving forward. Again, Jill Allen here with Jill Allen and Associates. I am always here to help. I'm here to help you level up if you need to level up. Uh, please give me a call, reach out, and I just hope that you are taking this time to grab a dream and start moving forward with it.